We have symbolized a lot of conditionals so far. That is, we've symbolized sentences of the form if something, then something else. When we do it, we generally write sentences of the form if p, then q, or p arrow q. Well, it turns out that the relationship that the arrow denotes actually corresponds to a variety of different things in English that we haven't talked about yet. In particular, we now want to introduce the concepts of only if, as well as necessary and sufficient conditions. So in class, we pointed out that every arrow, every p arrow q, can be read in four equivalent ways. If p then q, p only if q, p is sufficient for q, and also q is necessary for p. And the claim is that all four of these expressions mean the same thing in terms of their logical significance. Now, this can be rather confusing stuff. I remember when it was introduced to me, the relationship between necessary and sufficient really felt rather baffling. But to get good in symbolization, it's really a matter of knowing these rules that we have associated with the different expressions. However, in this video, I'm interested in seeing if I can help you to understand how all of these expressions are related to each other and make this all make some sense. So let's start with this sentence right here. If you're a lizard, then you're a reptile. Symbolizing that is easy, right? It's just L arrow R. And we know that because this is an if-then sentence. If-then, and we know the rule for if. What follows the word if is the antecedent. So this is trivial. But now the interesting part is that we are claiming that every if-then sentence is equivalent to an only if sentence. How would you read L arrow R as an only if sentence? Well, it says read it as P only if Q, so that means L only if R. Which means that in English, what does this turn into? Well, I conveniently have it right here. It means you're a lizard only if you're a reptile. And the claim is that if you're a lizard then you're a reptile means the same thing as you're a lizard only if you're a reptile. Unfortunately, I don't think that our intuitions do a very good job of recognizing the similarity between these two sentences. So I think if we're going to understand it, we have to draw a picture. It turns out that every conditional can be thought of as representing the relationship between two sets. What is the relationship that's related to if you're a lizard then you're a reptile? Well basically the underlying idea is that all lizards are reptiles. And I hope it's obvious why this picture represents the claim that all lizards are reptiles. The set of lizards is inside the set of reptiles. And so notice this picture corresponds quite well to the standard conditional. If you're a lizard, then you're a reptile. If you're inside the lizard set, then you're inside the reptile set. And that is what this arrow statement can be thought of as expressing. But now let's think about the other one. You're a lizard only if you're a reptile. Well, what that means is that you can be in the lizard set only if you're in the reptile set. The only way to get yourself into the lizard set is to pass through the reptile set. If you think about both of these sentences as just describing this set relationship, I think that's the best way to see how they're connected to each other. Now the thing is, we use these expressions, if, then, and only if, in different circumstances, and there are layers of meaning that are associated with them, which I think makes it hard for us to see, just in natural conversation, that they mean the same thing. Well, let's go further. Every sentence of the form P arrow Q can also be read as a sufficient condition. And when you read it this way, all you're saying is P is sufficient for Q. So that means that L is sufficient for R, or if we turn that into English, what's it say? 
being a lizard is sufficient for being a reptile. Or lizardness is sufficient for reptileness. And again, that, that makes perfectly good sense with the picture, right? Being in the lizard set is sufficient for being in the reptile set. Being a lizard is enough to make you a reptile. So again, it's just a way of describing the picture. Finally, let's talk about necessary conditions. When you read Piero Q as a necessary condition, you always read it backwards. So Q is necessary for P. And as we pointed out, every arrow is both a sufficient condition in one direction and a necessary condition in the other direction. So as a necessary condition, this says R is necessary for L, or, now the big reveal, being a reptile is necessary for being a lizard. And if we think about the picture, we can see that what it is saying is that being inside the reptile set is necessary for being inside the lizard set. In fact, notice the reason I say that sufficient and necessary are two sides of the same coin and that you always sufficient and necess necessary always go together is that they're just two different ways of talking about the same picture. Being in the inner set is sufficient to put you in the outer set. But being in the outer set is necessary for being in the inner set. There is some subtle stuff here. These sorts of relationships are difficult to bring into consciousness and get really comfortable with. But in terms of symbolization, what's really important is to know these rules. I mean, in an ideal world, you'd get to the point where all of this made perfectly good sense and you could take a sentence and think about the underlying picture, but when it comes to doing the symbolization, it really is a matter of knowing these rules. And then when you encounter a sentence, you want to break it down into small chunks and apply the rules. Well, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing I should admit. Let's get rid of all this information here. Clear out the lizards and the reptiles. Yes, if this was a better video, it would involve actual lizards and reptiles, but uh, it's not that good a video. Um, I forgot, I have to unlock all these things. Unlock them all. There we go. Now I can get rid of this. There we go. So let's consider a different study sentence. If you study, then you'll pass. So the claim is that every if-then sentence can be read in all four of these different ways. Now the sentence that we just saw, it was chosen because it actually sounds pretty decent in all four of these different ways. But how do you symbolize if you study then you pass? Well, that's pretty clearly, come on pencil, that's pretty clearly just S arrow P. Well, if you think about the sets, what's this sentence going to assign to the two sets? Studiers on the inside, passers on the outside. If you're a studier, then you're a passer. Okay? How do we read this as an only if sentence? Stop and think about it for a second. Most people want to say that what it says is you pass only if you study. But in fact, if we just follow the rule over here, it says we should read it as P only if Q. That would mean study only if pass. That means that what this really says is you study only if you pass. That sounds horrible. We would never say this sentence in English, you study only if you pass. Because it turns out that phrases like if, then, and only if, they have strong temporal connotations oftentimes. And when you say you study only if you pass, well, 
there's just no way around it. That seems like it sounds like you're saying that you study after passing. And of course, that makes no sense at all. But if we think about what these two sentences are supposed to be saying about these sets, well, the first one's just saying, if you're in the studier set, then you're in the passer set. You study only if you pass means that in order to get into the studier set, first of all, you have to be in the passer set. They both have the right relationship to the sets. The problem is that the words, the logical words, have layers of meaning. They have connotations that go beyond the mere logical structure that they're related to. And in these extra layers of meaning make it so that we wouldn't use them in the same circumstances. And so those differences of meaning are what can oftentimes confuse us. Notice this really isn't any different than the situation of and and but. And and but don't mean exactly the same thing. But in terms of the logical significance, they do. So I wanted to point out this bit of trickiness. I suspect the bottom line is you have to be careful about your intuitions. Sometimes things won't make sense. And that's why when you're symbolizing, the rules are especially important.